Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. This week I've got a whole selection of comfy UI niblets for you. We've got a PixArt model that's bigger and better than ever. The new schedulers and samplers are now easier to use. There's a better background remover, as well as a new ControlNet Union Pro Max model. I've also got a bunch of tips and tricks, so let's get into it. First up then is this new PixArt Sigma 900 model thanks to Data Void. The key features are listed as now having 900 parameters, up from the original 600, and improved image quality. It also looks to have an Apache license, which is good by me. Same as always, the model goes into your model's checkpoints directory, and the checkpoint here is called 900M Base Safe Tensors. It's already supported in Comfy UI via the usual extra models custom nodes we've all been using to run PixArt already. This means it will work nicely in your existing PixArt workflows, so all you need to do is select the new model in your auto loader. If you don't already have your basic PixArt workflow set up, then do check out my original PixArt video. You'll find the link to that and more information in the description for this video. Best to check that out if you've never used PixArt before. This workflow is just a really simple one I'm using to compare the new model versus the original 600M. All the common stuff such as prompts, image size and seed is in that first group at the top. Underneath I'm generating the images first with 600M and then the same again with 900M. All very straightforward, so let's take a look at some of the outputs and compare the two. Just to add that 900M does run a little slower than 600, with a batch size of 4 being generated at 1 second per iteration for 600 versus 1.5 seconds per iteration for 900. I've tried quite a few things now and it's honestly tough to say which outputs I prefer. For example, in this first set of images, you can see that despite having the same seed and prompt, the actual results are reasonably different. We've got the normal 600M at the top and the 900 in the green at the bottom. For me, I think 600M seems to prefer all those tiny little gritty details, whereas 900M favors a slightly more smooth and rounded feel. Moving on to a new set then for this set of examples, I'm asking for a Welsh lady with curly black hair who has a painting of a hipster with a huge moustache hanging on the wall behind her. Quite a few differences here. Once again, we have that sort of smoother look. Image number three for 900M is certainly better as it doesn't have two people, so a slight edge for 900 there. There does seem to be a little bit of style loss though, especially evident in that first image where it seems to be losing some of the shadows and contrast on her face. This time I've asked for a rodent opening a time portal, and while nothing related to time is visible in 600M, 900M certainly seems to be trying to include clocks, which does suggest some potential at following prompts a little bit better. However, once again I think there is also a slight loss of that painting style. This last PixArt example then, I'm asking for a cubist art style painting of a mystical wizard and it should be pretty easy to see the total lack of cubism from 900M. So there is certainly some style loss. Overall then, I think 900M is worth playing with as it may follow your prompts a little bit better and in some cases have smoother, cleaner results. On the flip side, however, that may not be what you're looking for and the style sacrifice may be too great. That's it for the PixArt model comparison, making it time to have a look at those new samplers and schedulers once again. I've already done a first look at the new samplers and gits in a previous video, links in the video description, but having used them for a little longer now, there are a few more things I've noticed. As we saw earlier, PixArt is great at a bunch of stuff, but getting those super crispy outputs isn't really its forte. No problem though, as we can use other models to refine the output, such as SDXL. In this case, I'm using the Proteus version 0.4 model, which you can also download from Data Void's Hugging Face, but any model will do. The basic concept is to start off using PixArt and then let SDXL finish up the remaining steps. As you can see here in the green SDXL group, she now has a lot more detail, though much of that is due to my favorite node, Perturbed Attention Guidance. Note also how the usual K sampler scheduler now has align your steps and gits options available. No need to use that custom sampler anymore, making things much easier. 
Now you've probably noticed it too, but when using the new Euler++ samplers with SDXL, images can get a little crispy as you increase the number of steps. These three images to the right show what I mean. The first one there is just a plain SDXL version of that same prompt. Personally, I think Pixar did a much better job at following it, but hey, this SDXL image has better overall image quality. However, note the guidance scale and steps. This has perturbed attention guidance set to three and a CFG of just 0.2 with 15 steps. Increasing the number of steps does two things. So here we've gone up to steps 24. There is a lot more detail, but the image colors have also become oversaturated. Sometimes it's worse than others, though I do also like the extra details. This isn't something that happens with DEIS. As you can see down the bottom there, I've gone all the way up to 25 steps and the color hasn't become oversaturated. So it's just those new Euler++ ones. You can help to reduce some of that burn by rescaling the guidance. So there I've got a massive automatic CFG. So that's, that's the new image there with 24 steps, which is pretty good. It's okay, it hasn't got the color burn, but of course it also hasn't followed the prompt as well. She hasn't got the orange top with black stripes that she's meant to have. And if we go all the way over here, I've got a normal sampler. So that's DPM 3M SDE GPU with GITs. And there you can see orange, black stripes, much better image and 20 steps also not burnt. Of course, not having to use many steps can be a good thing as it's faster. Using it with a refiner image to image or just straight off the bat with a large latent all work great, like in these examples. Pixar nicely following the prompt here as I should have a cybernetic engineer repairing ancient Rome and some colorful spiraling towers in the background. The SDXL refiner in this case is using the new Euler CFG++ and in just six steps, it has done a very good job. Look, it's added all that detail. Here, I'm also doing a high res fix. The upscale in this case is 1.5, so quite a big one, but it only needs another six steps. There it is, Euler CFG PP step six, and we've got loads of detail once again on an upscaled image. Of course, you don't have to use PixArt. I'm just rather addicted to it at the moment. You can run it straight through SDXL without using that at all, and it's absolutely fine. Of course, it's missing the towers, which I asked for, and it's not quite bright. They don't have all those colors, but it is 1460 by 1960 in just 10 steps. But nerdy, I've used the other samplers and they're really cool, have you? Okay, well, I've done the same thing as well and I still think it's quite good. So there we've got the Euler CFG and here we've got UniPC, which is okay. You know, it's still a good image, but it's a lot crisper on the old hands there. If we go over to some other ones, there is DEIS, which I also don't think is quite as good. So let's just put all three of those up. So 10 steps, same image. Pretty good resolution, but I do think the Euler++ Plus Plus gives a better result. More new stuff then, and this time it's another option for background removal. This one is called iSpy Renet RemBG, and you can install it via ComfyUI Manager. Very simple workflow then, just generating any old image. Here I've got a rodent wearing power armor. And if we have a look at the different options, Oh, I think we can see one is definitely better than the other. So this one is the original RemBG. And as you can see, it's still got bits of background in his whiskers and in between the arms. Whereas the new one here, much better on the whiskers. It's almost even got the bit in between the wires there and around the fingers. So a very much improved output. The final new stuff for today is this latest ControlNet Union SDL Pro Max model, which does a, a whole bunch of things. Look, it's like OpenPose, Canny, and InPainting ControlNets all in one model. One model to rule them all, and in the darkness of latent space, guide them. Um, anyway, if you grab that Pro Max file and save it to your ComfyUI models control net directory, then you can use it like a typical control net, and it really is very good. Oh, and I suggest giving the repo a nice star too, then we'll get more stuff, and who doesn't like more stuff? 
on to using it then. It's much like your typical control net, only now you've got an extra node, set union control net type. You've got auto, open pose, depth, scribble, canny, normal, segment, tile, and repaint. Most of those are straightforward, so I'm just going to show you the in painting and out painting examples using that repaint type. The first thing when you're in painting, of course, is to have an image and a mask. So here I've got a woman. Now this is quite a big image. It's 1920 by 1080. So I'm only gonna in-paint a little bit of it. I could open it up in SAM Detector, but I'm gonna open it up in Mask Editor. We'll do a really, really nice mask of her face and save that to Node. Now that we've got the image and mask, just a quick overview of what's going to happen. Essentially, we're compositing the mask back onto the original image and then sending that image in. So notice it's not a VAE encode for in-paint, it's just a normal one to the K sampler. And then the black area is what gets changed. And here I'm just compositing it back in again because the image is so big. So 1920 by 1080 image, like it, well, this one was actually 4K. Uh, so that was why I needed to cut out the little bit. And I've got a cut for in paint there. Now I've set it quite big, 1328 by 1328. That's a reasonable size. And one thing this does is it looks at the entire image that you're sending in for the style as well. So it, it pays to have a fairly decent size in there. I'm going above 1024 by 1024. Anyway, so let's run this through and you should hopefully see what happens. There we go. So in the prompt, I'm asking for an owl face again. I've just left it the same. So we've got that mask, which I've turned into a little black blob. The black blob is put back onto the original image, which I'm then cropping to 1328 by 1328, sending that into the K sampler, adding her face and then putting it back onto the original image. And there we have the result. So as you see, I'm generating the little black blob, putting the black blob on her face. The cut for in paint is saying that's bigger than 1328 by 1328. So I'm only going to send that bit of the image in. That goes in, adds the owl, and then puts it back onto the original image. Now, the other thing that happens as well is you will see some slight color change on this which is another reason for putting the original image back in. Even though this one does really nicely and there's no seams or anything, A, obviously it's too big, and B, the color changes. It's, it is quite difficult to see there, so let's move to another example. Okay, this time I'm doing exactly the same thing again, but instead of selecting a mask, I'm using the pad image for out painting box to give us an extra 512 at the bottom. So there we've got our black box at the bottom. I'm sending the original image in. Uh, I don't need to cut it this time, of course, because it's an out paint. I'll just send that whole thing in and it will fill him in and give him a leather jacket. Now we've got this nice comparative node over here, which will show you what I mean. So as you can see, there is quite a lot of difference on the color. That's the original one. And then that is the in-painted version. If I set it around halfway, then it's really obvious. You've got lots more detail in that face, which disappears in the in-painted version. On this one then, a slightly different approach to blending it back in. Grow mask with blur, and then the usual blend in-paint node as well. There we have it then, loads of new things to play with, and hopefully I'll see you on the next Nerdy Rodent video. Ooh, nerdy Rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.